routing criteria you can set in a server administration. So in Lasso 9, as I said, we're pushing this back into Apache, this, this job. Um, so there is no longer, I mean, the terminology is a little confusing here, but, but the Lasso server component would, can be launched for each site. So typically in ISP, you know, you may run, you're running 10 different clients' um, websites on your server, and you're going to launch 10 different Lasso server components. And each of those, um, each of those is going to run its own fast CGI server, and basically it's going to communicate to Apache on a different port. So uh, there are a number of uh, environment variables that you set in Apache, which determine what port um, fast CGI is going to listen on, or, or what port when Lasso server starts up, what port it's going to listen for incoming fast CGI requests on, and then that needs to correspond to the port that you configure in your uh, configuration. So, uh, just the numbers need to match up for each for each site. Uh, so these are the environment variables that Lasso recognizes. Lasso nine recognizes right now. Uh, the first one is fast CGI port. By default, we listen on eight nine nine nine. Uh, you can configure what user Lasso will run as. Um, by default, the Lasso user. Um, you could also set up accounts on your machine for like your different clients. And each Lasso uh, Lasso server process could run as a different user now, which is uh, nice because you can configure file permissions and things, uh, so that Lasso is restricted into a, uh, essentially a sandbox for each client. Um, we can set uh, where uh, home is for Lasso. Uh, by default, Lasso 9 installs in the library Lasso folder uh, on Mac OS X. Um, uh, I can't remember the path right off the end of the But the uh, Lasso 9 home environment variable tells Lasso where, where it lives, and that's where it's um, uh, SQLite uh, databases are, where it's uh, Lasso startup folder, various things are. And so in a, in a client situation, you might set this to slash users, slash client name, slash Lasso. And you'll actually replicate the home for each client, and that's how you can have customized, uh, customized startup for each client, or of course they need different SQLite. Uh, and then this last one's just kind of useful, print failures. Uh, by default, it's zero. If you set that to one, you get much more explicit. Um, well, you get error messages. Every time you have a protect block, Lasso suppresses the error. If you have Lasso 9 print failures on, they, uh, they stream through the console, so you can see if errors are happening. Mm -hmm. It can be useful for debugging. And then one final one, uh, Lasso Server App Prefix allows you to, um, to uh, Lasso will, will prefix every request coming in with this path. So if you, if you set it like to Lasso 9 Admin, then you've essentially locked Lasso into that path, which is its own admin application. So normally, like to get, our, to get the error log on Lasso 9, you use this bottom URL. Um, Lasso 9 admin logbook, and but now it's, we've told Lasso to use the prefix Lasso 9 admin, so so this top URL will, uh, will load the logbook. So so this would be useful if you had like a virtual host that you wanted to log into a particular Lasso app. And then just a, a quick note: um, the. Uh, and this is something that we need to work on. But the uh, just the way Apache is configured right now in our uh, comp file, it, it can only launch, it only wants to launch Lasso server once. So just for the purposes of this example, I've created an alias to it. Uh, and uh, we need to play around with the configuration a little more. Make sure that, that this isn't necessary. Um, but this is basically how configuring 
last than I should. Um, so within Apache, um, we can actually launch. We want to launch Lasso 9 multiple times. So within our virtual host, um, this is for like the client called one. We're going to duplicate the fast CGI server, and I'm going to run this client on port 9001. And so I'm going to set his. Um, I'm going to put him in a, his home directory, library lasso sites one, which is a folder I created. Um, I'm going to have him run as the user one. And then when I configure this further down in the same file, it's like I've got, I'm going to configure fast CGI server now, like a different server using port 9001. And I'm going to map the uh, you know the dot lasso uh, file extension and the, the virtual directory to this fast CGI server. So now, like if, if I left the other stuff in place, I'd have one lasso server running on port eight nine nine nine, one lasso server running on port nine thousand one, and those will uh, you know that just allows the different clients to uh, access their own copy of lasso. So we're, we're working on making this process, um, making sure that we're, we're doing these things in, in the best way possible for Apache, but, um, but that's the, the basic gist of it. Um, I want to talk about the, uh, just briefly about how we handle web requests when they actually get into Lasso, and how uh, and how we handle web responses. Um, <clears throat> there's a there's a new object in Lasso called web request, and it contains everything that Lasso knows about the web request. And so there, it has a, a whole a bunch of different uh, members, um, such as cookies, HTTP user agent, etc. It's just, uh, and then what we do in um, but it's like, what well, we don't recommend if you want to get a cookie that you, like if you want to get the list of cookies, you don't need to call this. Um, what we do, we have a, a compatibility layer. We have these things all throughout Lasso 9. They're essentially, I mean, they're aliases that make the familiar Lasso tags work, even though we're doing things kind of on the, uh, we're doing things a little differently kind of behind the scenes. So. So this is a little Lasso 9 syntax which defines the client cookies tag. And it's basically simply an alias to this web request cookies tag. Uh, so now we can just go ahead and call client cookies. Directly we get back web, you know, the results of web request cookies. Um, and so, so from your point of view, it's like most, you know, most of the Lasso 5 tags should work the same as they do. And they should work the same in Lasso 9 as they do in 8.5. But there are some times when you might be interested in going into the web request to get information that wasn't available in Lasso 8.5. And this one's just a real common feature request, so I wanted to point it out. Um, and we may have a friendlier way to access this eventually, but the web request gets all of the, all the information passed from Apache to Fast CGI. And so in particular, it gets all the environment variables. And uh, I don't know how long people can ask me for this, but uh, so there's quite a few of them. Um, the all the ones that start with HTTP are the HTTP headers. You can get all those through Lasso 8.5, but you typically can't get um, like this one at the bottom. My variable equals my value. That was one that I added at using a set end directive in uh, Apache, um, and you'll also see. Through these, there's a number that are uh, a number of them come from the file system and are actually inherited 